We're gonna go ahead and replace our front driver side CV axle. It's located right behind the wheel, behind your knuckle, and it goes right into your front differential. Using a 22 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and remove our lug nuts. Let's go ahead and remove our wheel and set it aside. I'm going to start by removing our upper cotter pin here on the lower portion of our ball joint. Use a pry tool. You can try using a pair of cutting dikes and use them as leverage. So you grab the cotter pin and just pry it out. Now this is not a stock ball joint here, so I'm going to try a couple tools here with our pliers and our pry tool, pop that out. Let's go ahead and loosen this nut. 21 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and loosen our nut here. Now we're not going to remove this, we want to go ahead and loosen it. When we release the upper control arm from the knuckle, it'll kind of pop up a little bit here. So we want to keep the nut on here and use it as a capture nut. So you spin this off till half the threads of the upper ball joint are still in the nut. You put your pinky between there so you have a general idea how much thread you have available. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our hammer and we're gonna strike this part of our knuckle this should release our upper ball joint from the knuckle and our nut will be used as a capture nut and stop this when this pops apart. Let's give this a few good whacks. You can see that it's now separated. I'm gonna go ahead and use our jack underneath, support our suspension here. Maybe put a strap on this to hold it as well and then we'll go ahead and loosen this nut the rest of the way and remove it. Now I'm going to use a strap here. What we want to do is anchor our knuckle here inboard because once we separate this here, it's going to want to pull out board and we don't want to put any extra tension on our flex hose here for our brakes, our ABS or our CV axle. So we're going to go ahead and attach this now. It's going to pop it into a frame port right there and over here and that'll keep that knuckle inboard. Let's go ahead and remove this upper nut here. Using a 21 millimeter socket and our breaker bar, we want to remove our brake caliper and bracket from our knuckle. There's a bolt up on the top here, and then there's a bolt on the bottom. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove those. Once those are loose, we'll switch over to our ratchet. You may get to a point where you can go ahead and finish taking those bolts out by hand. If not, just use your ratchet to continue and zip those out. Now two things you want to pay attention to, once you remove this bolt, you're going to have the brake caliper and bracket with the brake pads. It is a heavy, awkward component to work with, so you want to be careful and be prepared to handle the weight of that. As well as when you remove this, the brake rotor will be floating. You don't want that to fall off and hit your foot or anything like that, so be prepared for that as well. Now when we remove this, we want to go ahead and lift this up and support it. We're either going to use a hook or we're going to use some sort of strap to secure it to the suspension or the frame up top. So let's go ahead and do that. What 
we're gonna wanna do as well as wanna go ahead and pop off our clip on the back side here holding our ABS. So we're just gonna use our pry tool here. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that off. Use a pry tool or a trim tool. And we're gonna just pop this off of the knuckle itself. That'll give us a little more flexibility. Grab your brake rotor, remove that, and set it aside. Using a 35 millimeter socket, we're going to go ahead and remove our axle nut. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and loosen our lower ball joint nut here. And use a 22 millimeter wrench. I'm gonna loosen this. We're gonna go ahead and use our hammer. We're gonna strike the side of our knuckle here, and this should release our ball joint from the knuckle. this nut. Bring up our control arm here. Now I just use a securing strap to go ahead and hold up our upper control arm so it's out of the way. Using a 21 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead and loosen our outer tie rod end nut. Remove that and go ahead and pop your tie rod end out. Now, at this point here, we can't get our CV axle out from behind the back side of our knuckle. So, we have two options available. One, unbolt your strut assembly and then kind of have to deal with a compressing that and trying to get that back into place. Second option is simply undo the nut on your lower ball joint and just pop the whole knuckle right off with the wheel hub. That is our path that we're going to do. So we're just gonna take our ABS wire here. I'm gonna follow this up. We're gonna disconnect our ABS wire from our clips and right up behind the fender well liner here, there's gonna be another connector. We're gonna pop this off of the wheel well liner here. We're gonna disconnect that and we're gonna remove our whole knuckle. I'm gonna use a trim tool and I'm gonna go up behind the liner here and we're gonna pop these two little buttons holding our connector up there. here. Pull that through. That'll expose our ABS connector right here. So you want to pull up on this tab, which ours was already released, not sure why, but pull up on this little red tab and then press down and we'll separate our connector. Let's go ahead and start by removing our lower cotter pin. Once we get that out, we're going to go ahead and loosen and remove our lower ball joint nut. Using a 27 millimeter socket, we're going to get loosen and remove our ball joint nut here. Now you want to be careful because at this point here, there's nothing else holding your knuckle in place besides the knuckle being wedged onto your lower ball joint. So I'm going to keep this nut on here as a capture nut. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to strike the knuckle here to release that. Now 
Now that this is popped, you can see there's no more gap here. Now at this point, once you remove this nut, the whole knuckle is gonna drop down out of the place and you have your CV axle that is through the hub itself. So you wanna loosen this, remove it, but you wanna be able to capture this unit. Right here is where a CV axle attaches to a stub shaft that goes into our differential. I'm gonna go ahead and use our hammer. I wanna go ahead and tap the backside here to try and pop this off of that stub shaft. We've now disconnected it. It's actually coming out with our stub shaft, but that is not an issue. We'll be able to separate that once we remove it from the diff. Now we can go ahead and grab the CV axle, remove our whole unit, pull this out. Here is our stub shaft that goes inside of our CV axle. Let's go ahead and separate these two components. I'm just gonna use a little pry bar here. I'm just gonna put it between the stub shaft and the axle. And just tap it. There's our stub shaft. Now before we install our stub shaft here, you wanna check out the seal here. Make sure the seal is in good condition. If it is leaking, marked up, nicked, damaged in any way, you wanna go ahead and replace that now. Ours looks like it's in good condition. It's not leaking, it's nice and dry. We wanna go ahead and install our stub shaft here. Once you get that in there, we're simply gonna use our mallet and we're gonna tap that in. And it'll pop in like so. Just gotta line up your CV axle and slide this up and on. Just give that a tap and it'll shoot right on and lock into place. We're gonna do a two-fold here. We need to install our CV axle into our hub as well as put our lower ball joint in and get our nut caught. So we're gonna try and get the lower ball joint, pivot it over a little bit, work our CV axle down. Once you have that nut caught on the lower ball joint a few threads, you can go ahead and work your CV axle in. Then we can release our strap up top. And go ahead and get our upper ball joint nut started. and snug up the lower ball joint nut. We're gonna use our 22 millimeter socket. We're gonna tighten down our upper ball joint nut here. And install our outer tie rod end. I'm just gonna get the nut started on there for now. Let's go ahead and torque our upper ball joint to 40 foot pounds. Torque our lower ball joint nut to 40 foot pounds. Now at this point here, we do have a hole for a cotter pin 
that we had removed. You want to go ahead and make sure that the notch in the castle nut lines up with the hole in the ball joint. So you can go ahead and put our cotter pin in. If it doesn't line up, continue to tighten the nut until the notch in the nut lines up with the hole in the ball joint. So here's our hole. I'm going to go ahead and line up our cotter pin. And that'll lock in a place like that. I'm going to put a little bit of anti-seize compound around the hub and our nut area here. Install our axle nut. Let's go ahead and tighten that down. And at this point here, we're gonna go ahead and thread on a couple of our wheel nuts. Use a pry bar on our lug nuts here to keep that wheel from rotating. And we're gonna to torque the spindle nut to 185 foot-pounds. Once that's torqued, go ahead and remove your lug nuts. Grab your brake rotor. Set that on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use some solvent on our brake rotor. I wanna make sure that this is clean and there was no dirt or anything getting on the rotor itself from when we had it off. And see, we got some dirt on here. Now that we have a rotor on, let's go ahead and install our brake caliper and bracket. At this point here, I'm gonna push our rotor on. I'm gonna slide our brake pads, caliper bracket, and caliper onto our knuckle. Let's go ahead and get our upper bolt started. Once we have the upper bolt started, a couple threads, should be able to go ahead and get our lower one lined up. Go ahead and snug those down. Snug that down, and we'll do the same for the bottom bolt. Let's go ahead and torque our caliper bracket bolts to 130 foot pounds. Go ahead and connect our ABS wire here. Snap that into place. Once that's clipped in, press our red lock in. Then we can run this up top and press our push pins back into our fender liner. Install our plastic push pin right here and our upper control arm.
We're gonna go ahead and tighten our outer tie rod end nut. We're gonna tighten this to 22 foot pounds and then an additional 90 degrees. Now at this point, let's match up the hole in our ball joint stud to the notch in our castle nut and install our cotter pin. Install our cotter pin. I'm gonna feed this through and it comes through the other side here. Let's go ahead and bend this over. And tap this up into place. And then we're just gonna snip off the excess. Go install your wheel, get a lug nut started. Let's go ahead and snug these lug nuts down. Let's get a torque down our lug nuts to 130 foot pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.